everybody. Hey, hey, we're back. We did it. We're in the same room again. Somehow. Nate appeared last night out of nowhere. Just ran over here. Straight out of Walla Walla. Yeah. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal. We, uh, for those who are just joining us for the first time, this is a movie podcast where we talk about movies. We are the Loomer Brothers. I'm Preston Loomer. I'm Nathan Loomer. And that's what we do. And that's it. End yeah. of episode. All right. Good, good job. Oh, yeah. No, we come together. We send each other movies. We watch them. And then we talk about what we liked and what we didn't like about them. And this week, our category that we chose was best remakes. Mm-hmm. And because we're sadomasochists, we watched... Both all side, of them. Both sides. Of the we world. watched 12 movies yes. for this, so you all better appreciate it. Yes. All right. The movies that we watched were, in no particular order, Ocean's Eleven, both versions, The Birdcage and its original La Cage Full, mm-hmm. Little Shop of Horrors, both versions, Yes. The Thing and The Thing from Another World, both, both versions of The Fly, and The Evil Dead and Evil Dead. Okay. Cool. The order we're going to go in for these is the one that Nate disliked the most of the originals to the one he disliked the least. Ocean's Eleven. Ocean's Eleven! Very simple. I had high hopes for this movie. We're going to talk more about the new one, but the original let me down harder than the Yeah, we're gonna, we, we use the originals more for comparison than for yeah. um, anything. So the first thing we're going to ask with each of these is, did it need to be remade? Yes. Yes. We both this agree. Definitely it needed did. a remake. And was the remake better than the original? Yes. A million times better. Yeah. The old one, it just like the only part of it that I remembered was Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah. He's I was the best like, he's, he's the best part of the movie. He gets that cool song that makes no sense. But everything else is so boring and slow. And even like, look at all these dudes. I was like, that is. 10 white guys who look the same, look the same. as Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> and the plan doesn't even make sense. They're not thieves. They're like ex-army buddies yes. who decide we're going to rob a casino today for no reason. No reason. Besides, we can do it. They're going to rob like five casinos at the same yes. time for no reason whatsoever. But the new movie. The new movie directed by Steven Soderbergh back in, I think, 2001. Has an all-star cast that works. It's amazing who they got. <laughs> they got Matt Damon. They got George Clooney. They got Brad Pitt. Basically, if they were on a 90s People magazine Sexiest Man Alive cover, they're in this movie. <laughs> this movie. Uh, Julie Roberts is in this movie. Yes. They got Bernie Mac, Casey Affleck, Scott Kahn, Elliot Gould, Carl Reiner, Don Cheadle. That Jewish guy who does all the hacking for them, the black, <laughs> the no, the black, the Asian gymnast dude. It's a lot. There's a lot yeah, of people. So many people. But they all, you remember them. You remember what they did in this one. Yeah, they, their personalities, they, they do a good job, I think, when they meet them. Of, I mean, they do a good enough job in this one that Rick and Morty made an entire episode based on the concept yes. of, like, the high school <laughs> team. I mean, son of a bitch, yeah. Uh, um, the, it has one of the best movie heist endings i don't want to spoil it yeah we'll, we'll try not to spoil but this one because it's so good if you haven't seen it's it it's nuts there's so much that it's so here. layered it's like twist within a twist within a twist yeah and by the time you figure out all of them you're just like wow that's crazy it's, but the plan makes sense that it would like because a lot of times you're hoping that like when people lay out a plan in movies for heist movies you're like it only would have worked if like these pieces went together yeah but they had a plan set up like that was those pieces. And and the uh, other the other thing is like the ending on this one compared to the original. The original's ending is so disappointing. Yeah. I was like, that was all that work for nothing. For a sad, not very funny twist on an ending. But this one actually like the ending's yeah. like you feel justified in it. And set up a pretty good series of movies. Yeah, it's not the best. It's though. not the best, uh, the, but they're not terrible. Yeah. <laughs> they're still- they do have that really funny one in two in Ocean's Twelve <laughs> no. where Julia Roberts pretends to be Julia Roberts because she apparently looks like looks Julia Roberts. They play the fact that she's played by Julia Roberts. And then there's the, you know, Ocean 13 where they get Al Pacino to be like crazy Coke Al Pacino. Yeah. Um, it is, I mean, now watching, I actually felt a little bad watching because Bernie Mac has died and Carl Reiner just died. And I was like, man, we lost, we lost some legends. Some legends. But they do, they do pace it better, I think, than the original. The original takes like half the movie to even get to the heist, <laughs> whereas this one's like right out the gate. We're heisting. Get your dudes. Yeah. We're going to give you five minutes to meet all of them and then go in. Yeah. But even them setting up the plan in this one is exciting. Yeah. Seeing them. 
And, and unlike Frank Sinatra, like Frank Sinatra is not an uncharismatic guy, but Clooney is so charming so good. as Danny Ocean. He just like, you instantly hook with him. You're like, this is a cool dude. I'm in with this dude. Yeah. Whereas Frank just seemed like, I'm another guy among the dudes yeah. who gets like, to do all the exposition, but Danny Ocean is, is played by Clooney. It's not terrible. It's just bland. It's just <laughs> bland. It's bland. It's not bad. It's bland. We it just, just has, worse. It has no personality. Yes. That's the problem with the original. And the new one improved upon that dramatically. Cool. Anything else on that? That's really all I got so that. it's one for it needed to be remade, and the remake was yes. better. We're going to keep track. Okay. Oh, God. I don't even know what I pick after this, though, for my second. Well, you're going to have to pick one. Because I actually like a lot of the original. I'm probably going to go with Little Shop of Horror. Little Shop of Horror. For original. Okay. For my second horse. Okay. Yeah. The the original. So Little Shop of Horrors is a, is a 1986. 85, 86. So, musical uh, based on a 1960 movie. Yes. About a plant from space that eats people, drinks blood, and tries to take over the world. Yes. Uh, the This new one stars Rick Moranis. As Seymour Krellborn, a young plant uh, was florist Forest. attendant, <laughs> and Ellen Green, who also starred in the Broadway production as Audrey, his like crush. And it's got a lot of I was I forgot how many people were in this. Yeah, like Cameos. again, Cameos. Christopher, Christopher Guest is in this, uh, John Candy's in this, Bill Murray's in this, Steve Martin has the part <laughs> of that dentist who's just fantastic. Yes. It's directed by Frank Oz, which means Muppets. Yes. The anyway. plant the plant might be the biggest Muppet it's in existence. The, part of the Muppet universe. I'm yeah. going to say it. <laughs> the Muppet Cinematic Universe. Yes. The other MCU. God. Yeah. Uh, but no, and I, I also think this one needed a remake. I think, yeah, I think the original story was a bit. Jack Nicholson is in, like a 23-year-old Jack Nicholson's in the original. Which, and he's the best part of that damn movie. But he is, but that joke is ruined in that movie. Oh, I know. Because, because, okay, okay. So in the new movie, Steve Martin, Bill Murray plays Jack Nicholson's part. He's a guy who what's the name, loves pain. He's, he's a masochist. masochist. He's, he's so he goes into a dentist to experience the pain. And then yeah. the dentist loves giving people pain. So it becomes like a battle of like, oh, I love the pain. He's trying to like do things to make him be like, oh, just eat it. Yeah. But in the original, the joke is the dentist is already out of the picture. And so Seymour. Seymour is there. So when the guy who loves pain comes in and is like, fix up my teeth, it's like, oh. And so Seymour's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. He messes it up. And he's like, I love it. I'm like, that's not the joke. I don't know why. I, went, I can't believe that's the original joke. That is the original joke. They, moved, they improved upon they the improved joke. They improved it that's so the much. Thing. They made it better. So this one, I think, I think this one needed a remake. And I do think the remake is better. Yes. Um, and the, the musical turn on it helps it. Yes. I think it, it adds to that suspension of reality. It gives the plant more personality than it has in the original. Yeah. Um, Not just like a monster. And the character. And the voice. <laughs> and yeah, the characters, the characters. And the endings changed a little bit. A little bit. And I heard that Frank Oz shot the original ending and Which, audiences hated it. If you it. watch, it's on YouTube. It's, I love it. It's way better with the original ending. The original <laughs> ending is fantastic. So and the original ending is a much more tragic ending, whereas the, the, the ending that they went into the theatrical version is a much more um, upbeat, like positive ending. Yeah. But I love that song, which one? with Mean Green Mother from Outer oh, Space. Yeah. yeah, where it comes in, all the little plants are singing alongside him, and I was like, that song is great. I wish that song was in the move in the original. Yeah, and then it still ends the way it does. Yeah. So, although I actually like the okay, maybe I'll spoil. I like the ending of the original. I like the comeuppance where he's in the plant yeah. and he's saying like, I'm sorry. Like he realizes, Seymour realizes what yeah. he did wrong, but it's too late. Which I do like. It, yeah, it's, yeah, it's good. And because it is a musical, what's your favorite song? Oh gosh, you know your favorite song? Uh, suddenly Seymour's a classic. It's just because of the joke. <laughs> I mean, it's just. Uh, yeah. But, oh no. I want to say the original ending, but that wasn't in this movie. Yeah. I'm always torn between the dentist song and Feed Me. Oh, dentist, yeah. They kind of go together. Feed Me more, might actually take the warm one Feed Me is really good. Feed Me is a really good male-male duet. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't get a lot of those in no. musical theater anymore. Yeah. I think we just, I think, and I think that Little Shop did what I think more movie remakes need to do, which is take a movie that was pretty meh and make it good. Yes. Stop remaking good movies. Start remaking bad movies. Kill. Cool. That what, was that was two. What four movies? Do, sorry, I'm trying. Okay, if with Birdcage, Birdcage, Thing, Fly, Evil Dead. Fly. Okay. Oh wait. Oh, I'm sorry. The Thing should have been in the spot. Oh, my bad. We messed up. I forgot already. about the Thing. All right. So the Thing so, is based on Bump Up Little Shop. One higher. <laughs> <laughs> Things from 1982. Oh wait, no original. Oh yeah. my God. Sorry. This is why this is so confusing. 
Yeah. Not, I like the original. I'm talking about the remake. Oh, no. Yeah, like the remake. Oh, well, we're doing the no. thing. It's too late. We Forget, moved on. We're doing the thing. The thing's up. Never mind. The original thing is my, my, actually my number one. <laughs> so we've, we've moved on. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. We're already doing the thing. We'll just keep going. Um, I, I didn't like the original thing. You didn't like the original thing? I <sighs> thought it was slow and boring and didn't work. And I thought the oh. new thing has so much damn tension in it. Oh, no. <laughs> I like how slow the original thing is. That's why I enjoy it. <laughs> so this is a problem. Uh, um, yeah, Things from 1982. It's a remake of the 1958 Thing from Another World. Yes. It um, Basically, an alien crash lands in the middle of like this Arctic or Antarctic. I don't know. Are you talking like the really, really old one? Yeah, the like black and white one with the big okay, like, good. I did watch Frankenstein right. monster. Never mind. Guy. I'm right. I was thinking there's three things. I watched three things. <laughs> oh, did you watch the 2011 one? I watched, I watched all three because oh. I'm sure. Yeah, no, the 2011 was not the one I was talking about. Okay, good. I haven't yeah. seen that Never one. Mind. This one, this, I was right. <laughs> I was right. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> yeah, sorry original for thing. the original original thing from the 50s is not a great movie. <laughs> it's not a great. And neither the 1982 remake. movie is fantastic. <laughs> 2011 is also terrible. <laughs> one, Kurt Russell. Yes. Two, um, oh, uh, Di- uh, Wilford Brimley. Yes. I wrote down diabetes. That's all I remember. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Keith David, David in this movie, whose voice is more famous than his his look. Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically the original had this just like Frankenstein monster looking thing that came yeah. crashing around and was beating on people. And you, there's no real mystery to it. It's just sort of a sci-fi monster film. Mm-hmm. And the new one took it and said, well, what if it could shapeshift into anything? And so you kind of never know where it is. It's probably the scariest like concept for a monster in any film yeah <laughs> I, I can't think of one thing that would scare me more than just like not knowing not knowing like what person to trust and we're gonna i'm gonna spoil the ending of this one because i think it's important the ending of this one you st- it ends up with you think they've stopped it but you're still unsure mm-hmm. there's still this tension of did they really get it did or they? is one of the people who's still alive another great. thing which is great because then the director also didn't tell them <laughs> in the scene yeah he didn't <laughs> so, tell them the so other they're acting one. like they don't know yeah. <laughs> like, i always think it'd be really interesting to do this movie but the thing is killed in the first encounter oh okay and it's just but, people but they don't know they don't know and so there's that sort of tension the whole time and yeah. they just like like make a movie with a shapeshifter and once they figure out that it is a shapeshifter they kill off the first person it turns into and then there's sort of that dis-ease of like wait a minute who else <laughs> who else and so then people just start dying and you learn it's not actually an alien it's just people like going crazy yeah not trusting each other that'd be really cool that's that's i don't know but this one really benefits from how slow it is like yeah. i don't think that's true of a lot of movies but this one actually it works because it takes its time to yes. really build up that initial tension you get to know all the characters mm-hmm. it has no women which is a problem the problem but <laughs> isaac tundra i mean i, I I know it's like kind of, a, I don't know, yeah. the setting and everything. And it has one of the best um, makeup jobs. Like special effects team did a crazy good job with the puppets and the yeah. way the thing looks. And that scene with the defibrillator gets me every time. Yeah. And after you watch the movie, you can go on YouTube. There's a great thing where they show the order of people getting knocked off. So you, the movie does have an order yeah. if you pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> it's very um, hard to tell when you watch you're it. You're talking about Kill Count? Yeah, Kill Count. Yeah. There's a channel on YouTube called The Kill Count. Um, Maybe I'll link it in the, in the description. Yeah. Um, basically, for any horror movie, it'll tell you the order people die in. And it's good to keep track of if you have to af- watch it after you watch, because it will spoil the whole thing if you don't. Yeah. Which we just did anyway, so never mind. So Sorry. <laughs> no. But they, yeah, and, it, and the thing is, like, gross and horrifying and seems alien and seems like you're not sure what it is. You don't know what it looks like. There's never really explained what it is or where it comes from or why it's there. It just kind of is this ambiguous monster. Yeah. And it... Like right out the gate, the tone changed. Like the original just said, it was like, this is a this is a B sci fi movie. And this one, I was like, oh, this is going to be scary. Yeah. <laughs> right. And it's made by John Carpenter, who did Halloween and The Fog and a number of other movies that I love. The Fog is one of my favorites, actually. <laughs> yeah. We'll get to The Fog some so, other day. Uh, we talk about a lot of horror films, so it's going to happen. I mean, Halloween's coming up in a month. We'll, yeah. we'll probably be like October, all scary stuff. All scary. Okay. Uh, that, was, that was number okay. three. So we've been. Uh, this is probably the hardest one. Bird, Birdcage, Fly, Evil Dead. Birdcage and Fly have the hardest. Which one do I hit? Because I actually really like both the originals. I think, but, yeah, I think both the originals. I think I'm going to put the fly lower. Okay, so we're going with the fly. The fly. Okay. I still like it. The original, <laughs> the original fly was, I, was it? 1958. 58. Was that one 58? Oh, then no. Then the other one was 50. 
something else. All right. I don't know. I've already messed up. I don't know. I'll... Sony movies. Here's the thing. You can type any of these movies into Google. So it'll tell on. you when they came from. And most of you probably don't care. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the original Fly from the 50s um, is about a scientist who, in a, an attempt to teleport himself, accidentally confuses his <laughs> DNA with that of a fly yeah. and turns into a monster and then basically has to spend the movie asking his wife to kill him. Yes. Then they remade it with Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis. The plot is similar, but the transformation is less sudden. And, <laughs> and Jeff Goldblum like devolves into this sort of yeah. like weird mutant creature thing where he yeah you have moments where he hates it and moments where he's like really glad that he's turned into it it's and cool. it's really cool i think of yeah. the of the remakes this one this one i think didn't need the remake but well, i think the remake's better i'm glad it did <laughs> yeah. yeah and david cronenberg did a really good body horror movie yes um, I think Jeff Goldblum's fantastic in this. I think I think it's one of his best. It might be his, his it, best thing. It might actually. be the best thing he's been in. I think, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the original. Sorry, I'm talking about the original. The, the the one thing about the original I like is the the costume like for that time. Even though it's just it's just kind of they're still stuck in like Frankenstein monster, mm -hmm. uh, Dracula type films, and you can feel that even though they're trying to do something yeah. more with it. Uh, but there is it's weird. So it goes from like yeah, just a picture. Uh, normal monster movie to a full on just drama with monster elements <laughs> it's yeah it's called body horror it's when you okay you, it, the, the idea is that your body is yeah. turning into something else and you can't control it yeah. that's that's the that's the genre, genre. subgenre that they give yeah um i love the pregnancy twist mm -hmm. that they give where where she finds out she's impregnated with what might be the flies the offspring Isn't that word and i think i think they made a sequel where she has the baby I don't know if it's Gina Davis again, but they, 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 that character comes that. back. Oh boy! And then, um, no, but this movie—I mean, this movie—not only is it like awesome, it, it's been parodied enough times. Remember when Heroes did it with that one character yeah. who suddenly got like bug powers for <laughs> bug no powers. reason? I think the bug from Men in Black was probably inspired by some of this. <laughs> um, mostly, the biggest lesson is, is don't do science drunk. Don't do science drunk. Yeah. And don't don't just don't teleport yourself until you know it works. Yeah, don't don't <laughs> yeah. something that that's that's that's, that's the problem is Jeff Goldman gets drunk and then just says, Screw it, we're skipping to human trials and uh, you have so much more time and, and you don't need fuses with the fly. Yeah. And, oh yeah, that's the thing. The fly just gets in there. Yeah. It just, it's, it's like it. an accident. The machine would have worked. The machine <laughs> like, works. He fine. did it. Like Well, and then he, and then he, and then it goes with him sort of turning, yeah. going, Oh, maybe this isn't a teleporter, maybe this is a genetic splicer, maybe oh, I can oh, fuse. Yeah creatures together just don't don't do that just don't do drunk science um the again like the thing though the, the makeup effects that happen they do a really nice progression where goldblum gets more and more and more yeah distorted until the very end where he's like a complete monster uh the performances like take this really seriously which is they didn't, <laughs> yeah. they didn't have to uh -huh. and they did and it helps it so much and, and it's, it, a, it's one step away from being a comedy like yeah, and they, they do a good job of making your protagonist your antagonist at the same time. Like, you kind of, you don't know whether to root for him or root against him yeah. for most of the movie until, like, the very end when you <laughs> kind of have to choose a side. Yeah. But, like, it, I think, yeah, I think of all the remakes we watched, I think this one jumped up the most for me in yes. terms of, like, I didn't know what to, I didn't know it was going to like it as much as I did again, and it, bam, yeah. right to the top. I, I never would have watched this unless we did this list. Yeah. I never had an interest in it. Yeah, but it's so good. It's really good. So good. All right. La Cage. Okay. Yeah. La Cage à Fall, or as it's titled in English, the remake, The Birdcage. The Birdcage. We watched a comedy. A comedy. <laughs> the Birdcage is a Mike Nichols movie from the mid-80s. Um, it's a remake. No, it's the early 90s. I think it's 92. Yeah. Early. It's a remake of the French film La Cage à Fall from 78. Mm -hmm. Um, it stars Robin Williams, Nathan Lane, Hank Azaria, Christine Baranski, Gene Hackman, close to Blackheart. Like, there's so many people in yeah. this. And I think this is the opposite of the Ocean's like Eleven. Like, it didn't need a remake, but I'm really happy it got. Yeah, and I don't think I think it's hard to. I mean, I don't think you can compare them. They're two different types They're, of that's movie. That's the thing. Yeah. So the French the French film is more of a low energy the comedy. It's yeah. like more of a situation comedy, kind of like a Noel Coward play. Whereas this is like higher energy it's a little faster obviously you got rob williams and nathan lane doing their zany and stuff one of my favorite rob williams 
parts. Yeah. From. He's actually really subdued. Yeah. Which is great. <laughs> which is great. <laughs> um, and the plot of it is essentially Robin Williams and Nathan Lane are two gay men. Robin Williams runs a drag club that Nathan Lane is the star performer of. Yeah. He had a child with a woman years, uh, Robin Williams had a child with a woman years, years, and years ago. That child comes and says, I'm getting married, but here's the catch. The father of the woman I'm marrying is like the head of the most conservative group in Washington, D.C. He's like the anti-gay, pro-family correlation. And you have to meet him and convince him that you're cool. And so then it becomes sort of this farce of, can we get the mom to show up? Can we get my gay lover out of the house? Can we disguise that the house is, you know... The, I don't actually own the drag club. I just happen to live near it. <laughs> All this stuff. And like now there's a musical of it. And yeah, there's a musical. Kelsey, Kelsey Grammer, I think, played the Robin Williams role in the musical. Yeah. It has it has so many good bits, so many good yeah. moments. And yet they're, I can't quote them, most of them, because they're long bits. Yeah, they're so good. <laughs> Which the scene really where he well. does the dance thing with the fussy, 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 like the gram. I love that. Um, I like that they do the setup at the beginning where you don't know if the son is the son. It's sort of this mystery of like, is he, is he their son or is he a lover or who is this kid? <laughs> Nathan Lane is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Nathan Lane in drag is the gift you didn't know you needed. <laughs> and Hank Azaria also as uh, Agador Spartacus, their butler slash butler. house boy. Who slash... needs to be in more things? I'm really, every time I see him, he's <sighs> so good. He is. He's just fantastic. I get, I mean, he's a great voice actor, so yeah. he does that more, but. Yeah. Then I think, and for me as a as a person, the, I think the energy of the remake is better than the original. Yeah. But I can see people who would like the original. Yeah. Like I know there's people out there who would be like, "Oh, I actually don't want this to be so fast." Right. Yeah. And this one's for mom because I've already told this. Mom, watch this movie. Yeah, she would love it. <laughs> You're gonna love it. You'll you'll think it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's oh, it's so good, and it's it's. I can't even go into it without spoiling most of the. I plot. don't want to spoil it. That's my. I'm yeah. senior quiet. Like don't. Yeah, there's some jokes involving a lot of sort of accidental gay pornographic items, and <laughs> there's a whole scene in drag that just makes the movie. But for the most part, I'll say didn't need a remake. The remake is about the same. It's okay, we have one. <laughs> it's good to find we have it. It's not like better or worse. Yeah, great. And then that's all. I think we just have the Evil Dead left. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, this one was easy. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. So, <laughs> the, so the original <laughs> Evil Dead by Sam Raimi from 1981. It's about a bunch. Of, it's the original like cabin in the woods yes. movie. Kids go out to the cabin to get possessed by demons. One of them survives by basically having to blow them all away. And it was so over the top <laughs> that it was comedic. So when they made the sequel, Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn, they basically leaned into the comedy angle. Yeah. It's the same movie, but with comedy. It's not really a sequel. Yeah. It's a remake. It's more of a remake sequel. <laughs> but the movie we're talking about is the 2013 Evil Dead, yes. which is a remake of the original that took all of the funny out yeah, I mean, and played it for <laughs> scary. So did it need a remake? No. No. <laughs> not at is all. the remake better? No. no. Is the remake still good? It's I okay. Think so. <laughs> it's, it's not bad. If you like, um, if you like a um, like just straight kind of yeah. gore fest, cheesy, scary mm-hmm. movie, solid, solid. And uh, Jane Levy as the lead is is really strong in it. She yeah. She's probably the one addition that I like. She's somebody. See somebody else. I want more movies, but yeah, man. Uh, I will say. The one thing the sequel is better than the original is why they're at the cabin. Yes. <laughs> they're not just going. They're going to get their friend uh, rehabilitated because she's trying to get off drugs. Yeah, she's a drug addict and trying and to rehabilitate so her. When she starts, when people start turning to like these evil things, it's more like, oh dear, she's she's tripping. She's tripping. Because she's the first one that gets possessed. Yeah. So and then everyone's like, oh, she's just on like some withdrawals yeah, or some withdrawals, drug issues. Which is great. But yeah. then it's just a normal horror movie from there on out. Yeah, but the thing the thing I liked is I, I noticed this time a lot of allusions to the original, mm-hmm. and they actually take it in order. So there's in the original and in this one, there's yeah. two guys and three girls, yeah. and one of the girls is the sister of one of the guys. Yes. And in, this, in both movies, it's the sister goes first, then yeah. the second girl who's not dating the main guy, then his friend, then his girlfriend, and then finally he is the lone survivor. Mm-hmm. But in this one, they <laughs> flip it so the sister gets redeemed. Yeah. Which I didn't see coming when I saw it in theaters, actually. Yeah. 
he gets redeemed and comes back and then basically like they take what you expect to be the guy you expect to be the protagonist and he's not he's not yeah which um, is good i i do wish i got to see more of this one because the evil dead tv show was a letdown i said or ever just have another of yeah the remake. another the remake yeah which and Bruce Campbell shows up at the very end of the movie, just for no reason, yeah, <laughs> just because in the credits. Well, he and Sam Raimi produced it too, so yeah. it's not like it's not like this one was just a remake with no connection. They actually like they're in. It. Yeah, I think that the best friend is Wolverine. That dude took more punishment than any human. <laughs> yes, should. he gets stabbed so many times and somehow isn't dead for a while. Yes. Oh, but I gotta put it in the bad list because it's the it's another. Or, oh God, spoiler, spoiler, whatever, skip do it. it. Do it. Uh, it's another one of those horror movies where the first, like, five seconds, I went, dog's dead. And then it happened. I went, bad horror movie. <laughs> if I can call it. <laughs> it's, it's why the Friday the 13th was okay, because that dog just jumped out a window. It yeah. didn't die. <laughs> dog survives. <laughs> dog survives. That's the sequel. It's a bad horror movie if your dog's dead. If, you do, if I can call it. <laughs> you see, okay. I know it's going to happen. Like, it's there just because yeah. it's a moment they're going to add. This one, every time I, read, I watch an Evil Dead movie now, I can't stop thinking that line from Cabin in the Woods where he's like, I'm going to draw the line in the sand here. Don't read the fucking line. <laughs> <Don't read. laughs> yeah, it's like every time. And I wish the Necronomicon, it wasn't scary. Like, the original one has a face mm-hmm. and it's like creepy. This one's just like a book. It's Jumanji ish. Yeah, <laughs> it, is, it is Jumanji ish. That's a good way to say that. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Um, there's, there is a scene where a girl gets sexually assaulted by a tree in both of these. Yes. One is weirdly funny, and the other one is not. Not funny. Um, I also do like that they give a better version of them not being able to get away from the cabin. Yes. With the river flood. I was like, oh, the bridge goes yeah, out. It's not it's just so like they're not going. I was like, if, if that bridge goes out and you're that desperate, you're going to climb down that wall. Yeah. Whereas I was like, oh, no, it's a flooding river. Like, they're going to get swept away. There's yes. no way to. And then I also like how it never really explains if the deadites, who are the, the demon things, it doesn't really explain what they are. Mm-hmm. Are they demons? Are they zombies? Are they ghosts? Are they some kind of combination? They're just evil. They're just evil. Yeah. <laughs> I also think that every cabin movie seems to have some guy who looks like he traveled certain in the 70s, no matter what time <laughs> period. What movie? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. And there's a good illusion. There's the chainsaw, there's the hand that gets possessed. Yeah. So I we will say this. If you're gonna watch any of them, watch the Evil Dead and then watch the rest of that original trilogy. And then watch Cabin in the Woods. And then watch Cabin in the Woods. <laughs> you didn't say that. We'll get to Cabin in the Woods at some so, point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I yeah, I just I think I, I was like it's beat for beat the plot of Evil Dead until the final act. Yes. Which is really cool. Which is fine. And actually I I like the ending of this one, even though it is the yeah. the what is it, raining blood moment? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's actually kind of cool looking. <laughs> yeah, it has a, it has a cool ending, and I think that I think that it could, um, if it hadn't been connected, like if I didn't know yeah. it was a remake, I'd have been like, "This is a solid this horror a solid movie. movie." Yeah, but because it's a remake and it has such a, it's 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 a remake of one of the best horror movies of the eighties. <laughs> yes. It has like a that's the issue. So like we said earlier, remake bad movies. Don't remake good movies. <laughs> Don't remake good movies. <laughs> Um, I think that's I think that's it. I think that's it. So wow. we have what, what did we have? We had four that should have been remade. Yes. Four uh, that were better. One that was kind of even, and one that was definitely not. Definitely not. There you go. That's all. That's, that's it. Did it. Yay! Applause! Applause for you. Applause for you. Um, we already know what the next category is, so I'm just gonna say it here. Two. Yeah, we <laughs> talked about it. We talked about two. We talked about two, but I picked one. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna do we're gonna do movies with um good sequels to bad movies so i have no idea there's four movies that we're gonna watch there's only four options <laughs> okay it's like four in existence <laughs> now we'll find some stuff um and until i guess that's all we got for now oh no i didn't think of a movie oh line. you gotta think of a quote i didn't think of a quote, quote i always do it before the thing and i didn't do it this time you gotta quote it oh i wish i knew the economicon like <laughs> oh you want me to, i'll get you that then you do it <laughs> no it's your it's your turn oh wait Where's Do- Dodi? He's over there. there you go. <laughs> that's the that's the one. Uh, is it, what is it? Klaatu Bar Bar. <laughs> oh my God! You're gonna make me do it. Yeah, I'm gonna make you say the freaking Latin. How do I say the middle part? <laughs> Bar- Barada Nictu. And now, Nictu. now if we have an evil <laughs> Necronomicon anywhere in the house. Yeah. We may not have another. This might be the last episode of what we do in the party. Pal. There we go. Welcome to the party. What, what we do in the party. What we, what we do in the party. Pal. <laughs> <laughs> we combine what we do in the shadows. Welcome to the party. Pal. 
All right, that's all I got. Peace. I'll, I'll see you guys later, and I'll see you in 10 seconds after it turns out. <laughs> 10? Where are you going? I'm closing my eyes.